Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at one-way shear code checks that are performed in S-Foundation and compare those to hand calculations. And for this example, we're going to look at a single isolated footing. This isolated footing will have a 3.5 meter by 3.5 meter square pad that is 650 millimeters thick and it has 25 M bars at 350 millimeter spacing on both the top and the bottom. And we're giving it 75 millimeters of concrete cover. We also have a 500 millimeter square concentric pedestal. And as far as material properties go, we have a concrete strength of 25 MPA, a maximum aggregate size of 20 millimeters, and we have a yield strength for our steel of 400 MPA. Now the loads that we've applied on this concentric pedestal, we have a dead load of 900 kilonewtons and a live load of 1200 kilonewtons. And we're gonna combine these two loads together as well. Uh, so we'll end up with a factored applied load of 2925 kilonewtons. And the goal with this example is to compare the hand calculations that we're gonna use. And we're gonna explain in just a second to S Foundation's rigid analysis approach. So S Foundation has two approaches. It can use a rigid analysis where it assumes the pad is entirely rigid, which is perfect for comparing to hand calculations. And it also has a flexible approach where it uses the underlying finite element model, uh, which is more applicable to more complex foundation types, uh, but might also be useful if you expect some flexibility within your pad. So with the example that we've set forward, that isolated footing, we have to calculate the effect of depth. Knowing that we have a pad depth of 650 millimeters and a concrete cover of 75 millimeters, we can calculate the effective depth to be 562 millimeters. And knowing this, we're able to calculate the effective shear depth as well, being the larger of 0.9 times the effective depth or 0.72 times the thickness of the slab. And we use the larger of the two, so that is the 506 millimeters. So this number we'll see again in the next few calculations. And that effective depth, uh, shear depth rather, is important for us to determine what the critical section location is for a one-way shear. So that one-way shear critical section location is located at a distance of the effective shear depth away from the pedestal face. So I've just illustrated this here in the following diagram to explain what it means. So this is a 2D cross section of our 3D foundation. It's 3,500 3, millimeters wide, the pad. We have a 500 millimeter wide pedestal and a 2925 kilonewton applied load. That's our factored load combination. So that means that we have, if we look at just a single cross section, uh, it equates to about 835 kilonewtons per meter uh, of line load underneath this, assuming a rigid pad. And so our critical section location will be a distance of dv away from our pedestal face, and that's 506 millimeters. So if we just plot this uh, shear force diagram, we'll be able to see that the maximum shear force that we're getting is about 1463 kilonewtons. But if we look at the shear force at our critical section location for one-way shear, it actually equates to 831 kilonewtons. And again, this is all based off the, the um, effective shear depth and so on. So at this location, that's gonna be the factored demands uh, for one-way shear, 831 kilonewtons. But what about our actual capacities as well? We need to determine what the one-way shear resistance is. And to start with this, we need to determine if we can use the assumption that beta equals 0.21. And this is valid if we meet the following criteria. And we can see here that we do meet uh, these criteria. So here we can say that beta equals 0.21. And with that, we can use the following formula to determine the one-way shear resistance. So we can determine the concrete resistance here based off of the input information that we see. Most of this we've already discussed at some point throughout this video. Uh, we also have these values here. Uh, so 0 0.65 times one times 0 0.21 times the square root of 25 MPA times 3,500 millimeters, which is the width of our pad times the effective shear depth, which is 506 millimeters. And this equates to 1208.7 kilonewtons. And this is good news. This is what we wanna see. Uh, we wanna see that our concrete one-way shear capacity is greater than our uh, factored shear force. So now that we know this information, let's jump into S Foundation and see if we can replicate those same numbers. So this is my S Foundation model. It's actually already constructed for me. 
Uh, I've got my pad and pedestal defined already, and I'm just going to dive into the pad a little bit more so we can better understand what's going on. So I can see here that the dimensions are 3,500 millimeters squared, 650 millimeters deep. And I do have uh, rebar as well that's been defined, so it's a uniformly distributed rebar with 25 amp bars spaced at 350 millimeters in X and Y in the top and bottom. Now in the example that we went through in the hand calculations, we were just looking at one direction. However, in this 3D example uh, with an S foundation, we do have both directions. So that's something we will need to keep in mind. We have the ability to define which direction of rebar is on top of the other. And because effective shear depth and effective depth does factor into the capacity calculations, this will affect the results. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. We'll look into that more later on. I've also defined some loads. So if I go to define design load cases option here, I can see that I have two different load cases. I have a dead load load case. And you can see the maximum load that I have here is in the Z direction. Going down is 900 kilonewtons. And for the live load case, it's 1200 kilonewtons. And if I go to the load combinations here, I can see that I'm just factoring these two load cases together using the following combination factors. And the reaction load that I end up with here is negative 2925 kilonewtons, which I calculated by hand as well. And one thing I do want to draw your attention to is because I'm using this factored load combination, I've actually got the ability to turn off certain code checks for factored load combinations. So in this situation here, I don't want to run the geotechnical checks like soil bearing and so on, because that's not really meant for factored load combinations. So I'm going to turn that one off and just run the structural checks. So now I can go ahead and run my analysis in code check. I'll click analyze in code check. And you can see very quickly there, we were able to run the analysis and get our results. And it's showing me the utilization ratios. I'll just expand this window on the right-hand side. And here it's going to show me in descending order my code check results. So it's showing me here the governing code check is the pad structural one-way shear, which is conveniently the one we're looking at. And it's for the low combination 1.25 dead plus 1.5 live. Maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger so I can see that. And I can drill down into the results, but what I'm interested in here is the demand versus capacity comparison. Now let's just drill down into this a little bit more. I'm looking at the low combination. I only have one foundation, but I can look at the details. And I can see here that I'm looking at the results in the X direction and in the Y direction, but it's going to highlight the one that's the governing check. In this case here, if we look at some of the parameters that are being used here, like the effective shear depth, it's 483 millimeters, which doesn't match our 506 that we calculated by hand. But this is actually the governing code check. However, for our example here, we were just ignoring any reinforcement in the other direction. So we didn't really have the scenario where we would have to stack bars on one, one on top of another. And in this scenario, this isn't really comparable to what we calculated by hand. I'm actually more interested in the X direction rebar because that was the bars at the bottom of my uh, pad. So the Y bars are on top of that. And you can see here my effective shear depth equals 506 millimeters. And it's showing me the location one and two. These are the critical section locations, which essentially means that if you divide the pad width by two, so 3,500 divided by two, that's 1750. And then you take half of the pedestal width, which is 250 millimeters. So that equals 1,500 millimeters now. And then minus that by the effective shear depth, 506, we end up with this value for location one and do the opposite on the other side. We get 2506. So that's where these numbers are coming from. And we can also see the capacities calculated here, the beta being used, the concrete strength, the steel strength. And if I look at the strip, I can actually see the values in more conventional engineering format. Uh, so I can see the demand is 830.5 kilonewtons and the capacity is 1209.6 kilonewtons.